All right. Hello, success. Hello, welcome. Hello, Judaica. Welcome, Stella. All right. Uh -huh. Hey, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Good evening. Welcome. Welcome. It's Friday night hangouts. Woo. Good evening. It's good to see you all. Enjoy the music. Thank God it's Friday night. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Stella. Welcome, John. Welcome, Oziama, Jay, Theodora, Rosemary. Nice to have you all here. Woo. Despite all the earth, we made it today. Yes. All right. Welcome, pretty. Okay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is another amazing episode. The seventh episode in season two of the Friday Night Hangout. And I remain your host, Joy Onyeso. I'm really super excited to have you all with us um, in this seventh episode. And we're going to be discussing amazing things today. Remember, it's Friday Night Hangout. We learn in a very fun, relaxed environment. How has your day been? How has the week been? Mine has been, mm, mm, mm. but in everything, we give God the glory. Thank you so much. So if this is your first time of joining us in the Friday Night Hangout, this is a platform where we learn to celebrate ourselves. We discuss topical issues. We build your skill set in a personal brand and business brand. We bring on experts from different endeavors of life to pour out into us. We do all this in a very relaxed and conversational atmosphere. And I want to welcome you all to this safe space. This is our safe space. The energy level here is high. There's so much fun. And I hope you're going to have so much fun tonight. So welcome once again. I do not take your presence for granted. I'm super excited to see you every Friday. And you know, that's the reason behind the Friday night hangout. It's the realization that so many of us are going through lots of pressure from the work and the domestic front. Some of us are at certain points in time. And this is that safe space where we put all our worries behind. We learn not to be anxious. We just come in here fully present and ready to engage. Yes, 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 yes. I just appreciate the energy, the interaction in this space. And I want to say a very big thank you to everyone who make up the time to join us Fridays, 7 p.m. So don't enjoy this alone. You have friends, family that should be on this space. And join with us, please share the good news so that our tribe can increase and we can just have some fun. So I hope you're ready. Remember, this is still the month of February. And we are discussing business and finance. But for today, we are going to be focusing on business processes and financial management tip. And I have an amazing in the house, a power woman in all ramification. And I'm going to introduce her to us very soon. And I, I, I certainly hope that you have your writing materials because like I promised last week, this week is going to be heavy, it's going to be deep. And I'm very sure that all your questions in terms of um, financial management, business processes, we're going to break them down so you have better understanding what to do as an entrepreneur. And in case you're deciding, we also provide you that opportunity to do just that okay my network has started acting up again oh great we're back my network started acting up um for a minute right there so um i'm super excited to bring to us 
um, Amazon, a chica, and I'm adding her right in, and she will be joining us very soon. Yes, welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> We're all here live. Thank you. Thank you oh, for I'm having so me. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Join me in welcoming her. Please join me in welcoming Achika. Let's give her the Friday night hangout welcome. Yes, that's it. Keep it coming in. Keep it coming in. Let's welcome our Amazon, a power woman in all ramification. And she's Thank right here much. to share her experience with us. Welcome, Thank welcome, you. welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to hand over to Echika to do a bit of introduction so you get to know her better before we dig deep into our conversation for today. So, Echika, dear, introduce yourself. <laughs> Thank you so much for this uh, opportunity um, and welcome everyone. It's so great to see this very vibrant community. Um, I don't take this for granted. I'm very honored to be here. Uh, my name is Echika Ubijiaku. Um, I'm the founder and CEO of Muanga. Muanga is a pioneer tech enabled debt recovery and customer support service company. Um, prior to my time in Muanga, um, I worked a bit with Deloitte in uh, financial advisory. And before then, I had quite a number of years of experience with Alexander Forbes. Alexander Forbes is one of the leading um, actual consulting firms in Africa. And I led one of the largest teams in Nigeria. Um, here in Mwanga, we work with a lot of fintechs um, to help them recover their debt. So most times, people take loans from the app, you know, these fintechs, and, you know, and they don't pay back. So we're the ones that, you know, would reach out to you and say, hey, pay back this loan. And then we also work with a lot of customer support for, you know, companies. And um, aside that, I have other um, non-for-profit things I'm very interested in. I'm currently the regional West Africa ambassador for the Women's Entrepreneurship Day in Nigeria. And um, I'm, a mentor, <laughs> I'm a mentor for Staring for Greatness. It's a foundation that is focused on building you know, children into strong leaders. And I'm also a trustee for an organization called The Bloom Story. Um, yeah, so there are a lot of exciting things about me, but yeah, that's, that's a lot of I got excited to have such an Amazon in our midst today. Yeah. I'm really excited. You know how it is. I try to bring to us um, women who have made their marks in their own sector. And the okay. idea is our capacity and for us to just have. And this is, you get all this for free. So I want us to really appreciate it. You got the time and all that and the willingness to share with us. Thank you so much once again. You're <laughs> Yeah. We're going to be discussing um, business process and okay. financial management with yeah. segment um, so that it's, it's really easy for you to follow through. And if you have questions, you can ask. Mm -hmm. I already see a question on board. And the question says, where is Mwanga? Um, Lagos, so Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> Mwanga is in Lagos, Nigeria. But, you know, get ready. We're, we're actually going global this year so it would, it would not just be nigeria before the end of the year but yeah amen to that so i hope that answers your question we have a very interactive and highly energized tribe here and so we'll be asking questions you know how we do it we ask questions we will try to answer as much questions as possible and we also want to know your thoughts you know um put your thoughts in the chat box let's know what you feel what you think what is coming through for you the aha moments um lessons learned please just put it in the chat box and just keep it very serious and um, just yeah. keep it coming in yeah so when yeah. we've segmented our conversation in the first segment we're going to be having um conversation on business process we're looking at what is a business process steps of um a business process and a process and the process cycle would we'll also should be giving us some concrete examples around that and then um essential attributes of what a business process um should look like and then we'll take our giveaways and all of that and then we go to the second segment where we'll be talking on 
financial management tips. So she will tell us uh, what financial management is all about, the importance, and then she'll give up, give us some very good tips that will help us grow our business brand. Who is excited? I am super excited. I'm ready. <laughs> Yes, I'm okay. we're going to keep it very conversational, mm -hmm. and uh, so I will we'll kick start by asking really, you know, what is a business process? Mm. Okay, so I'll make it as simple as possible. Um, a business process is as simple, it's the process of a business, mm. so it is, you know, a set of steps that a business takes to achieve a particular business goal, you know, and for every business, there is a different business model. So the business process you use as a fashion designer is different from the business model you use as maybe um, a, a hairstylist, for instance. So when you look at your business, everything that you need to do to achieve the goal of that business, when you put it into steps, that forms your business process. It's as simple as that. You know, they are very, you know, theoretical definitions that I can give you, but I want to keep it very simple for the tribe. And so one of the things that you would ask yourself, you know, um, for a business where a lot of times what I see is entrepreneurs understand how to do their business. But when they understand how to do their business, they, they leave it in the head. What they don't do is actually document these processes down. Because the plan is you are building a business to grow a team at some point. So how are you going to pass on your process to your team? How are you going to pass on that order to your team? So it's just basically a set of steps that a team or a company uses to achieve a certain goal. That's it. Thank you so much for keeping it very simple. And yeah. I hope, but I really hope you're listening and you're taking note of the conversation because this is super important for most of us here, especially mm. for the women tribe. You know, oftentimes we keep things here. We think because we're solopreneur, mompreneur, or an entrepreneur, we don't want to document our processes. Throughout this month, you've been hearing it, document, document, document. And mm -hmm. so very simply put, like she said, the steps to achieving your goal forms your business process. And it's very important that you document that. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you take us through the stages of developing a, developing a business process or maybe talk about the um, business process life cycle? You know, so some mm -hmm. of us here get a basic idea of what this in entails. Okay, so that's fantastic. Thank you for that question, Prof. So I'm going to take it in two bits. So there is a bit for um, setting up a business process, you know, because there are people that don't even have the business process. So what are the steps for you to be able to set up the business process? That's what is called a business process circle. Okay, now that's one category. There's another category I will be talking about, and that's the category of people that already have some business process, but the plan for a business process is to make your business to keep being efficient and effective on a daily basis. You have to get better, you know, in your business. So when you already have some things, what's that process for you to keep managing your business process in such a way that you keep being efficient on the daily? So for a business process, regular business process, there are seven steps, okay? So I think the first thing is for you to define the purpose of your business. So first of all, define your goals. What are the goals of the business? So I run a... Um, I, I run a hair salon, you know, for instance, what is the goal? You know, is the goal just to make money? Is the goal customer related? What is the goal of the business? When you know the goal of the business, align to that goal, what you now begin to do what they call mapping out the processes or mapping out the plan. There are different processes in a business. There's a process for how you onboard a customer. So a customer comes into your salon. How do you get that customer from, oh, good morning you know, or good afternoon, welcome to this salon? up until conversion stage where the person actually sits down and wants to you know have a hairdo there is a process for that there's a process for recording payments when you know you person has paid there are different processes in a business so first of all ask yourself what's the goal of your business based on that goal for your business and then you now move to the stage two which is mapping out the processes so when you map out the processes the next stage is to set actions and assign stakeholders one of the things we don't do as entrepreneurs i think because as for people that run businesses we're very you know um superman and superwomen oriented when you have a team you actually need to fit your process amongst people in your team so you have to say who is responsible for this part of the process who is responsible for that you as the owner of the salon i don't think you should be responsible for ensuring that um 
payment is made through POS or something, something. Someone should be assigned to do that. So when you map out your processes, you are also setting actions and assigning it to stakeholders. Stakeholders in this case can be your team or you know people that are directly related to your business. So I've talked about three steps. Define your goals, plan and map out your processes, set the actions and assign stakeholders. The next thing is test the process. Now, remember that this category, I'm talking to people that don't even have the business process at all, documented, you don't have it documented. You test the process. So everything you have sat down, you have mapped out, you have documented, you have assigned, test it. Test and see that I've said that for me to onboard a client successfully in my, let's say in my um, food, in, in, in my restaurant business, this is the business process I'm supposed to take. So test it, test it, actually carry it out and let everybody that is assigned, you know, be taught what to do and let them try it. When you test the process, you know, you test it once, you're testing with a small sample, maybe with one person in your team, test it with the person. The next thing is, if it works, if you see that it's working, then you implement. Implement is you now carry it out full blown. You know, let the whole company begin to embrace that process. Now, the next step is you monitor the results. You need to know the results you want to see as a business owner. One of the things that entrepreneurs don't do well is they do not measure performance. Mm -hmm. Measuring performance is different from one business to another. The performance my business in Mwanga will be looking for is different from the performance maybe um, someone that runs a school will be looking for. Different you know, performance results. So, Question is, what is your what is the desired result that you hope that that process you are documenting needs to achieve for you? Remember what we said about business process: a set of steps that a team or a company, you know, um, carries out to achieve a particular goal. So, what what is the result I want that um, process to achieve? Monitor the results. If you monitor the result and it's good, great, you repeat. One of the things I tell people is whatever process you set, your process must be scalable. What I mean by scalable is if it works for one customer, it should be able to work for five customers. If it works for five customers, it should be able to work for 10 customers. If you set up a process that can only work for one, and when you increase your customer scale to five, it can't work. It's not an effective process. It's not scalable. So, but question you say, how do I know if it's scalable or not? You know, I've, you know, I'm just starting. I've tried once. I, th I tried one customer. It worked. I'm trying five. It did not work. That's where I'm going to take you to the next step. And the next step is the place of people that now already have a process, but now have to go into that um, place where you start to manage your process over time. That's what is now called business process management. Hmm. So business process management takes it up from just setting your first level processes into a mechanism where you have a process, you are always going back to review, analyze that process, and then begin to make adjustments where necessary. Because the plan is, as you go daily as a business person, you need to get to the point where you, you know, your business has to be effective. You know, there's this example I like to use. If you are... If you, if you notice, the first time you were asked to cut like onions in the kitchen, you know, most of us will cut the onions and move back because the thing will be bringing tears into your eyes. But have you gone to these kitchens that you just see these chefs? And you're like, hey, how are they doing it? The truth is, they had a process of how they're setting, you know, the ingredients and everything they're going to use to cook. They've done this thing over and over and over again. The thing about a business process is it has to be repeatable. Yes. It has to be repeatable. So because they've done it over and over again, you see what happens. They become more e efficient. The same thing applies to your business. When you have your business processes all documented, every member of your team, they understand this process, and they're following it every day, every day, every day. Before you know it, there are some parts of the process that has been dragged that will start to shrink because they'll become so efficient in it. Do you understand? Now, that business process management, which is now the next leg to say, oh, I have a process. I have something, you know, I have something. But, you know, as my business is growing, my business model is changing. For example, I'll give you this example. The business process a travel agency used um, pre-COVID. Do you know that that business model started changing during COVID? If there's a step to onboard clients and they say, oh, do the graphics, get the discount, put it on social media, clients to rush you, whatever, 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 and then you do it. But guess what? If you do that same business process during COVID, my sister and my brother, nobody answered the travel um, agent. Why? Because there was an external change in the environment that affected their business. And by, by that means, they had to 
tweak their business model. That is where the people that have um, that already have processes now have to form that um, habit of managing. That's called business process management. Now, if I'm the, if I was in the travel industry, what I would do is go back with my team and say, "Oh, guys, COVID has happened, though, and this is really affecting you know us. Let's go back to our process. What can we improve?" Now, that is called business process improvement. As an entrepreneur, as a team member, wherever you work, you have to consistently be looking for ways to improve on your business process. So you have a process, great, it's documented. But when the, when, you know, by the time things change, you are, you have to work with the time. You know, so, you know theoretically, they, they even call it business process re-engineering. So it's almost like COVID came, it disrupted the way we did business. We have to sit back and we have to reorganize our processes. So my question is, do you have that process that is documented? The problem is that most of us are entrepreneurs, and guess what? I fell into that trap. We know the work. We know our work. <laughs> do you understand? And does it happen to you that when you now employ people to do the work, and then one of your staff messes up, you're like, ah, did you even know that you were meant to do this? But the truth is, you didn't give the person a documentation. You didn't onboard the staff so properly. Do you understand? You didn't, you didn't onboard the staff properly you didn't um tell the person oh you are you are here this is the process of how to make let's say shawarma in this uh, uh whatever the person does something wrong i said didn't you even use your head or was there a process was there an onboarding another thing with business processes is that people apart from setting up a business process improving upon it and all that you have to have a measure you have to have a way to monitor that that process is being done yeah so but don't put yourself under pressure, you know, as an entrepreneur and say, oh, I don't know all these things. I've not started all these things. Take it a step at a time. Let's start first by saying, let me think about my business. I always tell entrepreneurs, step outside of your business and think about your business differently. Because there is something called um, you being on the dance floor and you being on the balcony as a leader. The balcony is you are able to step out of that business and look at it you know, on a larger scale, have an overview of the business. The dance floor is that we're in the middle of the business doing the work, so we're not really stopping to think about the business. So when you do that, what happens is you are not exactly able to think about processes properly because you have to sit down, you have to think about it, you have to document. And what I advise is you may want to do it with your team because they are the ones that, are, you know, do it with your team, make it, you know, very inclusive. But one step at a time, start with documenting. Start with right, listing out the process, start with documenting. And guess what, guys? They are very, you know, there, there's the next step I would, I would talk to, but, maybe, but let me allow maybe Dr. Professor Joyce to ask her next question before I jump into it, because I wanted to go to the next step, which is business process automation. You know what we've talked about? Doc, you know, sit, define your goals, you know, map out the processes, assign people to, you know, do it, test it. Once you test it, um, you, you test if it works, you implement. If it works properly, you repeat. When you do that and you've documented the process, from time to time, you're looking at those processes and you're trying to say, okay, the business for us to achieve um, X results now higher, let's adjust it. So you're improving on the process. Once you start getting that into place, the next thing for you to do is to automate. Oh. Automate. Automate is look for you know a software that helps you um work that there, there are softwares that help you even keep tab on yourselves you know checklist and everything there's asana there is trello and these things are free do you understand they're free so you need to be able to use that get that and you know automate but we'll get to that we'll get to that so hey and yeah. uh, this is super amazing i told you we have a power woman in the house and um, she's just doing so much justice to the conversation. And if you've been following our conversations from the beginning of the month, you can just see that we are coming um, to the climax of the conversations. Here we've mm -hmm. learned how to document, you've learned steps in starting your business, you've learned the right mindset, you've learned about mental agility and all that. And today mm -hmm. we're teaching how to um, design your business process and breaking it mm -hmm. into very simple steps that you can readily understand. And that's mm -hmm. what we do. So that it's not all theoretical stuff. What we yeah. share here are very experiential knowledge. Things that we mm -hmm. have gone ahead to do, 
and I've seen that it works. Okay, now we've talked about uh, uh, automation. I also want us to look at, um, in fact, even in discussing, she has given us very corporate examples as to um, how you can actually build a business process. Now, yeah. for someone to even get this very clearly, let us use the Friday night hangout as an instance. Uh, for those that started from the beginning when we were here, May 22nd, you would agree with me that there has been a lot of improvement. And, you know, let's sit with your team and make, you know, have conversations, review, evaluate, and make things work. Um, when we first started, hmm. it took maybe um, a week for those that won the data subscription to get their data subscription. But right now, you find out that you're getting it on the same day at most the next day. Why? We had looked at Let's review it and we are outsourced it. Yeah. We outsourced it to a company that knows how to do that and is very skilled in doing that. That took the pressure off mm. us. Then mm. we also look, okay, what do we need to do to get prepared to come on board? You see, we're using StreamYard. When we first started, we weren't using StreamYard. Now, mm. with StreamYard, it's so easy. You just send the code and mm. it logs in. You don't have to download anything. You don't have to do mm. anything major. And it records for you. So the, what we're saying here today is your business is unique. Yeah. So your business process, meaning the steps you have to take to achieve your goal, is unique. Mm. Yeah. But the key thing is what st starts the whole process is understanding what your goal is. You start from there mm. and then you go backwards. Okay, mm. what, do I need to, what do I need to put in place mm -hmm. to ensure things work accordingly? We've, mm. we've talked onboarding for a very long time and everyone every guest that comes on board keeps talking about onboarding because this is really very critical mm. now um it's also very important to evaluate and that's where your yeah. SWOT as a tool, yeah. yes comes into play i i don't joke with SWOT analysis at all um you need to do a SWOT analysis of your tool at periodic intervals mm -hmm. Now, um, from what HK even said, uh, which is in consonance with all we've been hearing throughout this month of February, is that the business management skill set is different from the technical skill set. So there are two different skill sets, yeah. and we need to know who knows what and mm -hmm. assign responsibilities so that you're not doing everything. Everything. Right here, yeah. I hang out. Um, someone takes your number, someone reaches out to you and recharges for you, someone is um, backstage ensuring that this is happening, things mm -hmm. are set up, and then we do a review. So this is very important for your business. Mm -hmm. You need to ask, so I want you to just step back a bit as mm -hmm. this conversation is going on to ask yourself, what is my business goal? Mm -hmm. What is my business goal? Why are you setting up this business? Mm -hmm. Why does this business exist? Mm -hmm. ask, money cannot be the primary reason for setting up a business. Exactly. If exactly. it is, then is doomed to fail from the onset. So okay. money cannot just be the primary reasons mm. for setting up. Now, mm. um, Chika, please, I want you to tell us, before we wrap up this segment and go to the second one, we talk about financial management, um, mm. I want you to tell us about some of the attributes of a business process. You know, mm. some of us here are thinking, okay, I need to set up, you've given us the steps, um, mm -hmm. I need to set up myself, but then what are some of the features of a business process that would make me know that I'm in the right direction. Okay, I'll just quickly share like four things, four things so that it's very simple. One, your business process must be repeatable. Remember what I talked about scaling, scale, being scalable. It must be repeatable. It's not, um, there's a difference between business process management and project management, two different things. Project management is unique for each project. Business process is repeatable. So it has to be something that can be repeated, repeated and gives you, you know, the goal. It has to be able to create value. So there has to be, you have to be very intentional about every step you are documenting so that no step is useless. You know, the, you know the, the, there are some steps that are just a waste of your time when you look at the breakdown of what you're doing. For example, you know, you, you, would, you would hear some people, you know, I've, I've talked to a lot of um, um, entrepreneurs and when they analyze their processes for me, maybe two or three of the processes they have, I'm like, why are you duplicating your efforts when you can slash all this and have, you know, one? Your steps have to create value. So ask everything you're documenting. What value is it creating? From when you say, from onboarding, for example, onboarding a client, you can say, um, 
maybe um, staff must greet, um, you know, must, 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 um, must greet, you know, that there, oh, there should be a salutation and maybe a check-in. I'm just giving an example. What's the, what's the value of that opening and, 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 and you know, check-in? It's because you want to also be, be positioned as being very customer-centric. You know, we care about the customer. We care about the check-in. I've actually gone to Instagram to maybe make an order. And when you even greet the person and say, good morning, the way they even answer you, you'll be like, ah, it's not my money I'm bringing to you. <laughs> Do you understand? They just treat you anyhow. But you know now, women will just endure that if it's not for this bag I like, I will be, you know. So you need to know that for every step I, I have, it has to create value. Every step in my process, it has to create value. Another thing is it must be finite. It must have like a beginning and an, an end. When you have a process that is never ending, trust me, it's not a process, it's big. There has to be a beginning, there has to be an end. And every, it needs to be clear to say, this is where we're starting, this is where we're ending, and this is the purpose behind you know, it. Then it has to be flexible. When you have a process that is not flexible as a company, you know, you are just heading for rock bottom. You need to have a flexible process because if the business model has to be tweaked, your business needs to be able to adapt. When you have a very rigid process, what happens is when it's time for a business, for example, COVID, COVID threw a lot of businesses off balance. I remember when people were asking me, oh, how, 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 how am I able to, um, 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 to do this? By the way, let me tell you the parts that Mwanga plays in all of this that we're discussing. When a fintech looks at their business process of how they give loan and how they will collect the loan back, there's a part of the process where they say they have to recover. And they've looked at it to say, this thing is too, is too costly for us. What did they do? They outsourced it. They outsourced it to me. So I took that part of their process and I'm helping them do it. So that is, so like Joyce said, it's not every part of your process that may be for you to do. Yes. Some you have to outsource. And you need to be ready to do that. Some you have to outsource. Even though you don't know it and you don't have the person that will do it. If you can outsource it to someone that can do it, outsource it. And let them be clear on what you're standing. So what have I said? It must define it, have an end and beginning. It must be repeatable. It must be flexible because you don't want to, to, be, to be stiff. When COVID happened, it took us one day to switch our model immediately. To say, everybody, work from home. But guess what? A lot of people in my industry struggled. They struggled because there was already a rigid structure. And so when COVID happened, they really couldn't, they eventually bounced back, do you understand, as usual, but they, they, they struggled for a bit, but we just went, and all of us there working from home, you understand? And then it must create value. So, so that is it. So remember what I, you know, I have said, the business process, there, there, are two, there are two categories of people I've spoken to today. I don't have a process, I've never documented. I gave you seven steps. I have a process, but I need to be improving on my process. Five steps for you. For you, those five steps, you've already designed your process. You already have it. Now, that process, you are going to model. Model is in is similar to you assigning, you know, um, going through your processes, assigning to people that are going to, you know, work on what. Then you execute. It's similar to the seven steps I've given you. Then you monitor. Monitoring is very important. So you need to have your performance matrix. Performance matrix, very important. You know, and there's a way to measure your performance. Measure. Joyce has told you about different, you know, she mentioned the SWOT analysis. A lot of businesses don't even do SWOT analysis. Yeah. And you need to be able to understand the industry you work in. Because if you notice the companies that go ahead, they understand their industry. They understand the nations that they work in. They understand, you know, the people, even before they go to, even before they go to maybe India, they have st understood India and all that. You need to understand what what your strengths and what your weaknesses are, what your opportunities, what your threats are. It helps you so that you even know where to stay in your lane, where you need yeah. to partner with people, where you need to collaborate, you know where to collaborate. You need to know these things. And I think I'm very privileged to be on this kind of platform where Joyce, where Professor Joyce, Joyce will lead you, you know, through these things. And then finally, you optimize. You have to keep optimizing for improvement. You have to keep optimizing your so your improvement daily improvement remember the example i gave of the guy that was chopping the onions yes. he became an expert so imagine doing that in your business you know there are some people that when they are sewing you know you watch when seamstress are sewing on the machine i'm like are they even doing their leg like that you can't even do it but they've practiced so much they're able to do it quickly customer service you hear some people talking over the phone you know that they've done it for years they know how to flow do you understand so don't feel pressure to say, oh, I haven't done. This is a good place to start. 
let's take one step at a time, document, you know, and then, you know, list the processes, test, implement, repeat. Thank you. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. I'm super excited. So much value, so much nugget. I hope you're taking notes. I can see the comments in the box, you know, on the chat box and the chat box is literally on fire. This is what we need to hear at this point in time. Mm. Now, it, it's also very key. Some of us will say, okay, but I just have only one person working for me. Mm. I have just attend that. Let me tell you, um, if you are very visionary, you want the business to grow, whether it's just one person or two person, you need a process. How often do you sit with that one person as your team member to mm. say, this is the vision of this business? Mm. How have we place transparency accountability is also very key as a leader so you need to also let your team member know mm. where you tend to take the business to and if there are also challenges these are what you need to discuss you know so mm. that if, even if you're not around even if you're not around the show must go on the yeah. business so if your business is something that when you step aside everything collapses that mm. is one indicator that it is your business is problematic and is not scalable yeah. Hmm. So scalability also has to do with looking at your process and ensuring that even without you, the business can grow. Can so grow what is the pathway? Exactly. What is the pathway for growth for your business? So you have a business brand. What is the pathway for growth? It, your team members need to also understand the pathway for growth. Um, earlier on the show this 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 month, I talked about having certain goals. Now your goals can come in diverse form. Your financial goals your customer goals, um, your, your, um, your, your financial goals, customer goals, your staff goals as well. Because mm. now the, your people, these are the hearts, the core of your business. Mm. I'll give you a quick example. Very recently, like we usually have our team meetings every Monday to look at where mm. we are, what is happening. We talk about deliverables. So we have deliverables. So this is what you want mm. to deliver this week. And then at the yeah. The next Monday, we look at what are the challenges you did not deliver. What do we need to do? Now, I found out that a member of my team who is very key lacks some certain skill sets in mm. doing something. What did I do? I had to outsource the training. Mm. So, I had staff training on different aspects. We had training on PowerPoint, on digital marketing, on Excel, um, and, and data analysis. We did a mm. whole lot of that. Now, this is investing in the business. Mm -hmm. Because you want the business to grow. So oftentimes, as entrepreneurs, you need to be willing and ready to invest in your business. Mm -hmm. in that. So, you know, when we talk about automation, don't look for free things all the time. There are free programs. And from, you know, women, we like free things a lot. Yeah. We, <laughs> well, at least you start from there. <laughs> yeah, you start from free. Then you now and, start getting to the <laughs> So I, I need us to grow. I really yeah. need us to grow. So I want us to start from the free things and then get ready to Process pay. Exactly. So you should be able to say, okay, I'm outsourcing this and you pay for it. It doesn't mean that you cannot do it or a member of your team cannot do it, but it means that it's not adding so much value to the business if you do it yourself. Rather, it's adding mm -hmm. so much pressure and then you need mm -hmm. to outsource. Mm -hmm. Like we have the data, we have sourced the payment and it's moving so well because we yeah. gave it out. We need to do is to coordinate and make sure that things are moving mm -hmm. on well. So, mm -hmm. my dear, this is very key. There, 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 there are two questions I got in the chat box which I would like okay. to ask. First okay. one is, she says, um, how does staff appraisal come into this whole process? That's one. And then the other question is related to your business. Um, one of the tribe members says, what is the meaning of your business name and how did you come about it? Okay. Okay, so maybe I would answer the name. Okay, let me answer the appraisal question first. Um, so, one thing I've learned in business is this. Whenever you want to hire a staff to start with, you as the owner of the business, you need to know what you need that staff to come and do in your business. So don't just say, oh, I need help. What do you need that help for? What I would have, what I always advise is have a job description ready that you want that person to execute. Now, when you have that um, staff, you already have your processes. And part of this, your processes, this staff you've hired will do part of those things, right? Now, you need to have KPIs for that staff. So every staff, one of the beauty of business processes is it brings clarity. Everybody is clear on what to do. 
And what they are doing is very important to the business. So they don't waste their time doing other things that don't matter. They are focused on the processes that you have set because it's key to the business. So they are clear. There is no confusion. Now, for all those processes, you'd have to have KPIs. For example, if there is a process to make, let's say, um, a smoothie, Maybe you are a food, you enter the food business and you have a staff that is one of the people that work in the kitchen. And the person is responsible for turning out at least, let's say, 50 bottles of juice. I'm just giving an example. Every two days. There's a KPI. And the KPI is that you must, you know, um, daily, daily turn out of juice. 50 bottles. You understand? Now, the person, you've given the person the process and you have tested the process. Remember that you need to test to check that your process is even realistic, that you've tested it to see that this, this happens. I'll give you an example. When I started the business, you know, and I, I really didn't have managers and all that. I was really the one just working with my staff. So I was building them in teams. And I needed us to get a, a software that could help us call fast. We just really started. It was the early days. I did my research. I got a software. I tested it. And when I tested it, I was able to see that in one hour, this is the number of people I was able to engage. So I already have an expectation in mind. So when I gave the staff their KPI, it means that in this number of hours, you should have finished making this calls. Do you understand? So you need to be able to test the process. I want you to test the process in line with your expectation from that process. Give a KPI. That staff has to be the KPI. So if you do a process and there's no KPI, there's nothing you're expecting from the staff. Because at the end of the day, oh, I asked you to sew. We have a process for how we make do sewing in a fashion house. At the end of the day, if you follow these processes well, you should finish two outfits yeah. in a day. Yeah. That's the KPI. At the end of the week, when you're having your Monday morning meeting and you are sitting with all the staff, okay, um, total turnout of dresses. You have maybe one or two people on your team. Ah, Miriam. Miriam only did one, one dress. Mm. Miriam, please, let's say no. How is it one dress? Because we've tested this process and it works. Then Miriam can come and tell you, oh, you know, they took light at some point, the machines couldn't work and all that. But the thing is, because Miriam knows there's an expectation from her to follow the process and make two dresses, she has to stick to it. Now, by the time she keeps doing the process repeatedly and becomes very good at it, her productivity increases. Miriam can now step up and be doing more than two dresses with that process because she's now a pro. So you need for every process that you are doing, there has to be that KPI, especially with the people that have the major work in that process. Yes. There has to be a KPI. And the KPI, is, KPI differs from business to business. KPI differs from process to process. You can have different KPIs under different processes because people need to know the end goal. There's a KPI that you can have on, let's say, um, customer satisfaction. Now, you may not be able to measure that, but what you can do is you can have a survey, you know, and you can have, you know, either an online survey or maybe a fiscal survey. I don't know if you've done this thing where you go to a shop and when you're done, they tell you at the counter who attended to you. Yes. And then you give them, maybe you point, oh, it's that girl that attended to me. At the end of the day, there must be a KPI that says you have to convert sales. So you will notice that that lady will be moving. KPI means key performance indicators. Key performance indicators. Um, Theodora, key performance indicator. You follow the, the girl will follow you around the shop. Auntie, do you want this? Auntie, try this. This looks beautiful on you. Her job is to convert you. Her job is to, that's the other one she's telling you. She has a KPI to convert you. And at the end of the day, the madam will look at this and say, hey, BC, you converted four people today. Maybe the tax is to convert, you know, yes, something like a questionnaire or a survey. Make your survey very simple, Zioma. Make it simple. Don't make it cumbersome. Co uh, customers get very tired easily. So that's it. So you need to have that if you are checking. So the question is, what kind of business do you do? Because the business determines what kind of goals, what kind of process you set. And then that stuff you brought in, what did you bring that stuff in for? With that, we can look at the process and say, oh, with all these things that the staff is going to do, the KPI must be X, Y, Z. KPI doesn't have to be one. It can be several KPIs. But try to keep it as simple as possible. If you give people 10 KPIs, they are overwhelmed. Five KPIs, that is all encompassing. And when you are able to measure it, you have platforms in place to measure it. Customer satisfaction, either through a survey, either through, you, you know, you, you, you do that. So that's it. For Mwanga, Mwanga means light. How did I get that name? I got that name from God the Father. <laughs> he specifically <laughs> gave me that name. So that's it. <laughs> what language is that? It's Swahili. It's light in Swahili. Yeah. I hope that answers your question. And um, yeah. just to add to the staff appraisal, it's difficult to appraise if the staff doesn't have clarity on what they're supposed to do. So there has to be that conversation. Um, mm -hmm. to say this is 
notification. This is your key performance indicator. And this mm -hmm. is interval at which I would be appraising you and then make it a two-way process. So you would always ask what have been your challenges? Uh, what lessons have feedback. you learned? Feedback exactly. Session. So feedback session, what has been your challenges? Like the um, monthly report that the team usually would do, the structure is such that I want to know what challenges they've had and then mm. if there are any lessons. So that also helps me to know, okay, do we need to tweak this? Do we need to add mm -hmm. that? When we started with StreamYard, it was outsourced. Mm. We had to outsource it to an IT guy, um, Uche, who was helping us to run the program. The, when he now had um, challenges with his time, the mm. first session after that was a mess. Mm. But not flowing and all that and all that. We sat back to say, you know what? This process is not scalable, is not sustainable. The only mm. way to make it sustainable is we have a member of our team take with. This is wild today. So I hope this answers. Um, your question, yes, if at your KPI means key, key performance, performance indicator. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what an indicator is. An indicator is um, a measure of how your staff has, what, how a process has performed. Uh, it yeah. could be either qualitative or quantitative. So, quantitative yeah. means that, you know, maybe you're looking at confidence level, um, mm -hmm. skill length, you know, then quantitative, quantitative is that you can count to the number, maybe mm -hmm. number of customers that have been converted, mm -hmm. um, making dresses, number of dress sold. For those mm -hmm. that work on commission basis, it, the part of how your commission is on is on your KPIs. So it's yeah. okay. If you deliver 50 clients, you get this. If you deliver mm -hmm. 20 clients, you get this. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. very, very basic things mm -hmm. you know as entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. um, you want to leave a legacy as an entrepreneur. You want to make a difference. Mm -hmm. Then you need to Yes, KPI must be measurable. Yes, yes. Yes, indicators are measurable. They have to be measurable. What I also want, to, okay. What I also want to say is that, you know, so that you, as a good starting point, what I always tell you know entrepreneurs is research. There is, if you go on Google now, if you are in any business, just go on Google and say, what are the KPIs for, let's say, a fashion analyst or something, something, something. You'll find something. Yes. And that's a good point for you to start because you may say, oh, how do I measure this? But you see an ex examples of what is done in your industry and then you can sit back with your business and say, okay, does this work for me at this time? Because some KPIs may not be um, relatable to your business at this stage, you know, for the staff that you have. So do it, do your research, you know, as well. Beautiful. I, I really hope um I really hope you're getting this. There's another question that said um, how did you talk great I, committed to great your <laughs> hmm. Okay, so I, I think for me by nature, I'm a very inspirational person. So um I have this motherhead nature. So and I'm very passionate about people, extremely passionate about people. One thing I know is you need to be able to sell the vision to your team. Sell it to your team in such a way that they feel like, ah, this is our thing and we're part of it, you know, and we have to be part of it. And when you're selling the vision, it's not just about work. There's something that says, you know, um, give a heart before you ask for a hand. Okay? So with my very core team, with my managers and all that, beyond work, I know a lot of things about them. Beyond work, we can talk about, you know, different things. They'll confide in me with, you know, things. And when I'm selling the vision to them, trust me, you cannot fake passion. When I'm talking about the business, or I'm talking about where you want to go to. You can literally see the joy in my eyes. You can literally see the fire in my eyes. And the thing is, in the past, when I told them that, guys, we're going to go X, 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 because they saw that passion and they said, you know what, this woman, we believe you. And they went with me. And guess what? We got to X, X, X. Now I'm telling them I'm going X, X, X. Now my team is so, like we had a training, you know, and when, when, when Prof. Joy, Prof., Professor Joy was talking about bringing in trainers, sometimes, yes, I invest in it. I bring in trainers. Expert trainers come and train this team. And then the person, the, the trainer asked a question. She said, um, how um, do you think Mwanga can, can compete in the global space? Hmm. All my team members were like, yes, yes, yes. Me, the owner of the business, I was the one that, knew, that had thought to say, ah, we have not yet done this and this. So when they said it, I was really impressed. I said, guys, I, you know, I'm so happy that you are so confident that we can compete. That means that 50% of my work is done, that I have your confidence 
eighth grade. So you need to be able to sell that passion. But the question I'll ask you is, are you even passionate about your business? Because you know, Prof. Prof. Joy said something. She said that, are you just doing the business to make money, to make, to put food on the table for you and your kids and all that? And when you do that kind of thing, sometimes it's just, let me just make this money and go. You're not exactly passionate about that business. And the truth is, these businesses, they have ears. Yeah. They hear you. They hear what you call to yourself. You know, if you just want the money, they'll give you the money, but that's it. You will not build something sustainable. I tell people, I said that Zobo and Coca-Cola, they're drinks. But yeah. you know, you can do Zobo and sell Zobo like, don't drink, I'm just making and giving this supermarket by my house so that let me just find money to make. But if you really treat Zobo, your Zobo differently, you know, you can go across nations. You can do it. You can do it. There's, you've heard about um, Ayodeji, I mean, Mrs. Ayodeji, that moi moi, Moi moi to car. Moi moi, moi moi that we who eat and who be little to car abroad. I'm saying that are you passionate about your business? If you are passionate about it, sell that passion to your people. When you are selling passion to your team, remember that the team wants to know that you have their back. So remember yes. what I said: give a heart before you ask for a hand. Yes, beautiful. That really yeah. summarizes. And with that, um, I'll take our giveaways and mm -hmm. few intervals then we're really running short of time, but I'm happy we're having this conversation because this has really been so, so deep. Um, mm. I know there's so much value here. I'm seeing the comments. I know there's so much value here. And hey, Tribe, you're getting all this for free. And this, you need to really take advantage of this. If you need to pay to go for this training, you would know how much you pay to attend this mm. training. So don't take it for granted. Um, write down your nuggets and try to put it into mm. play um we will need to announce the winner of the replay post you know i would always tell you every friday please share this replay there's so many people that can benefit from this look at the conversations we're having now you may have a friend a family member a colleague that needs to hear what you're hearing now so share the replay and um last week we have winner for the replay last week so the winner is nasibu yakubu nasibu yakubu congratulations congratulations um You've won yourself a cash prize of. You've won yourself a cash prize of two thousand five hundred naira, and we have Jane Mosu, the second winner, also has won herself the cash prize of two thousand five hundred naira. Please let's celebrate Nasibu Yakubu and Jane Mosu. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations! Um, I really appreciate you sharing the replay and. This has been so interesting. So a member of my team is going to be in touch with you to make sure you get your cash prize. Then we had the YouTube challenge last week. And so we have a winner. And she has won herself a cash prize of 5,000 Naira. And Jideka wow. Okoye, congratulations. And Jideka, congratulations. Um, you've won yourself a cash prize of um, 5,000 Naira for getting 20 youtube subscribers for my channel congratulations 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 nasiba jane and Angideka. now we also have um remember we keep talking about all what we've heard today speaks to you also developing yourself now there's this online audio course that i have which is called the 30 days abundance challenge now mm -hmm. this is abundance challenge what it does is it helps you to set very strategic goals and also enables you to consistently show up for either building your business brand or your personal brand we discuss so much topic we discuss some topics like um how to effectively manage your time how to work on your mindset how to build your resilience um you know how to build effective strategic relationships and then just how to make yourself very visible and at the end of the 30 days abundance challenge, you walk away with an actionable concrete plan for another 30 days. Now, you also walk away with tools that will help you to conduct an analysis of your business or your personal growth to know where you are. So yeah. if you haven't subscribed to the 30 days abundance challenge, I just implore you to go to my website, joyonyusa.com, hit on the 30 days abundance challenge, and it's only 18,700 naira for the package and you get so much value it's a lifetime access you get to uh, you get to be enrolled into a private facebook page and then you will have the q a sessions 
and you just get to have me work with you through the next 30 days. We also have um, a Power Woman magazine. You know, this is the Valentine month. It's not just for one day. I believe love is something that should be celebrated every day. And so for the Power Woman magazine, for the month of February, we're talking about self-love. You can't open self-love, even in your business, even, oh yes, Vanessa says, I am a product of the 30 Days Abundance mm -hmm. Challenge. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Zima says, 30 Days Abundance Challenge, a mind-blowing self-discovery course. I gained so much clarity from it. Thank you so much for these testimonials. And, you know, that is what, you know, where you invest in yourself. I talked about moving beyond the freebies to actually investing in yourself to see yourself grow. Now, yeah. um, the Power Woman magazine for the month of February talks about self-love. And, you know, we even talk about businesses. How can you profit from love? What are some of the businesses you can do from love? I know you say, ah, love. How do you make money from love? Then you need to subscribe to the mm. magazine to know how to do just that. Yeah. I would um, halt here and then let's quickly go into the, so let's quickly go into the um, second segment. We're really short mm. of time, but I really want us to have conversation on this. So maybe I'll mm. ask you a set of questions, Echika, and then we quickly yeah. run through those questions. So okay. I will ask you, please, um, give us some time. We're going to run a little bit over 8 p.m., but I really want you to get this nugget. It's not every day we have mm. Echika in our tribe. And so she's here today. Let us draw from her wealth of experience. So please, uh, we're going to go run a little bit over time, but it's mm -hmm. a time for friends in this place. Yeah. So Echika, right now we're talking about the second segment. We'll be looking at financial management. Um, if you can just give us what is, just briefly what financial management is all about, the importance of uh, financial management, and then you give us some tips for the financial. So I'll see you three in one, and okay. then we'll have to, um, a question in the chat box. Okay. Um, so thank you again. Um, financial management is basically just activities that involve um, planning, controlling, and, you know, disbursement of funds with respect to a business. So just trying to keep it very simple. Everything about funds for a business, how do you plan for it? How do you, um, um, how do you control it? How do you disburse it? How do you use the finances of a business to keep that business stable? That's just basically financial management. Like I always say, there's a theoretical definition for it. But in this tribe, it's a simple tribe. We're keeping it very simple. Um, I'll just quickly run quickly to the tips in financial management. What are the importance of financial management? You know, basically, they just help. They help the health of the. They, they help the financial health of an organization. Um, if you don't manage the finances of, a, of of an organization well, what is going to happen is before you know it, the organization dies. The organization dies. So you need to know that it's an organic part of the business that is so key. The money, without the money, there's really no business you're running, to be honest. So if you have the money, how do you manage the money? How do you keep the money? How do you plan for the money? Do you know you plan for the money? Yes, you have to plan for the money. So most times what I see is entrepreneurs want to um, sell and make money, and that's it. So for them, they're excited about the sales. What they don't know is that they need to prepare ahead even before the sales, okay? Another thing is when you, you know, it, it, it ensures economic stability because when you are able to sit back and look at how are we going to control money, how are we going to disburse money, how are we going to use money, when do we need money? you know in the business when do we need money and how are we going to get that money we need if you don't sit down and begin to look at these things as, as a business person the business withers away you know you need to be able to sit back and say it's time for my business to invest and i'm going to go so in in financial management there are like three scopes of financial management high level will take financial you know uh, financing decisions um investment decisions dividend decisions there are three you know areas now depending on where your business is at this stage you may not really worry yourself about some of the some of these um, um parts of the scope but you should start thinking about it one thing that i know i do well in business is i treat my business and i i i start to push to have a structure in my business like as if it's operating like a fortune 500. we're not yet fortune 500. we're not there <laughs> but i begin to do those kind of things financing decisions so how is the business getting financed the business can get financed through different ways. You can either go and get money from investors. You can, 
borrow money from a bank, either debt or get money from, um, or just get money from, you know, people just get money into the business. Or you can use the money the business has made to run the business. These are different ways. But question is, how do you know what portion to use for what? then i will move into the tips so because of time i'm just going to jump into the tips quickly budgeting yeah. i rarely see business people budget budgeting is very key every for example now for the month of march by right we're meant to have annual budget annual yeah. budget but let's break it down and say before you even say annual budget start with monthly budget so now the month of march is coming do you have your march budget what are the budgets? Because you have some recurring costs in your business. You pay for lights, you pay for water, you pay staff, you pay all those kind of things. Everything that you're recurring needs to be part of your budget. The things you're expecting in sales, and expectation in sales, you need to have that assumption. You know, some people will say, oh, for my business, I can't really say this is what I'll make. But you need to have that assumption. Over time, there needs to be a trend where you say, on average, this is what I'm expecting. Guess what, guys? It can be higher, it can be lower. But you want to have that budget, you know, assumption. Another assumption that another budget line that people need to have in business is what is your budget for investment? So when I budget, when I make, if money comes into my business, apart from everything we're budgeting in terms of recurring items in the business that are coming in, salaries you're paying, recurring costs, everything we need to pay, there are one of that that will come up. And before your budget time, what happens is you have different members of your team. Now I'm talking as someone that has a large team. You may have no, nobody in your team and it's just you. What are the things that you know you need to buy? For example, you, you sell shoes and you've been taught on Instagram on how to take very good pictures. So you need to invest in buying that uh, picture box, that white yeah. picture box, and then get you know, a good phone. No, those are things you need to buy. They are one-offs. You need to put that in your budget. So in the month of March, I'm going to buy the whatever. But guess what? It's not everything you need to buy that you need to buy every month. You need to ask yourself intentionally, Is the can the business survive without this thing? Do we really need it? You can spread your cost. Yeah. So the recurring cost, that one, you can't do anything about it because they have you have to pay them. Put them in the budget. They are one-offs. The one-offs, you need to ask yourself, is it really urgent? Is it important for the business? If it's important, fine. Can you spread the cost? If you can spread it, fine. If you cannot, put that in cost. Investment, no matter how little. So there's something I, I, I tell my finance person. I say, well, we have something called investment. We have something for savings. You know, there are two different things. Investments, the plan is that we're trying to take the money for investments to actually invest. The savings is we're putting money aside in some accounts to, you know, be liquid. We have a percentage to say, well, this percentage of every revenue we make from every inflow goes to savings. This percentage goes to investment. And guess what? We're so disciplined about it. We've not landed though. We still have our struggles. So don't think it's a perfect business I run. No, nobody runs a perfect business, guys. Nobody does. So when we see that, what happens is we will we'll just, you know, when the inflow comes, we're so disciplined to say, no matter what it is, you see that investment, close your eye and just drop it in. If we have an investment account, drop it there. Savings, drop it in the savings account. Because when you drop it, you know how, how they say that when you form the habit of saving, when you take out the money and you pay your tithe to you do all those things, what is left? You will condition yourself to know how to manage what is left. You will. But you need to be disciplined as a business person. Another thing I want to say is keep your records. Entrepreneurs, keep your records. If for nothing, for an, to have an organized business, there is no transaction you must do. Have invoices. Have invoices. I know that Wave, Wave is a popular platform that a lot of us use for in, um, invoicing and accounting things. But I know that Wave is shut, has shut down for some countries and they have opened it up to Zoho. So there's a platform called Zoho. That's if you even want to start with. Have invoices. And in your invoices, you should know the items you put it. Have your invoices. There is nothing you are going to give out to someone that is about to pay you money. Make sure you have your invoice. Keep your records. When you, when people, when someone, you know, has paid you or maybe when you, you are about to pay someone, get the receipt. Keep records, open files, start with even a clear bag. You know that clear bag they sell in um, on traffic? That's a transparent yeah. bag. Start with it. Have one clear bag for receipts. Have another clear bag for maybe invoices. Thank God, invoices are now very soft copy. If you use Wave, you use Zoho, they're online. You don't even need to print out any invoice. And you send it directly from the platform. Keep records. There is a an Excel spread, um, spreadsheet we use for, when I said business, I said to use it for inflow and out of petty cash. No matter what you spend in the business, even if I paid 500 for lights, 
the date. It has the column for date. It has the column for the item. It has the info. It has a phone. Keep that record. Now we'll go to the main one. Have an account for your business. If your business is not registered, you need to separate one of your personal accounts just for that business until you are able to register the business and get an account. Your business, you know, Professor Joy kept saying it the last time. She said, your business needs to be able to survive outside of you. You need to treat your business. You know, you need to, so I, I think in Japanese, we need to respect our business. We need to respect it like an entity. So treat your business differently. Let your business have a separate account. You have a separate account. Now, some of you will tell me, but you know, I, I, how am I, you know, sometimes I have to dip money in the hand of in the business to take whatever. Do you know my answer for you? Pay yourself a salary. Yeah. Pay yourself a salary. Entrepreneurs don't do that. When you pay yourself a salary, you can put your, put your salary to say, okay, the business pays me this salary. The business covers this amount of maybe my phone credits. And you too, you need to be very realistic about it. Don't go and say, I'm the CEO, business, 100,000 naira worth of phone credits. No, because just very realistic phone, phone credit, especially if you're a business that you deal with customers in your data. Maybe for, put put a, a limit to those expenses and cap it and let it be that. Let that be the only thing you take from your business every month. You have to be disciplined. Because at the end of the year, when there is a time for profit sharing, you as a shareholder still will get dividends. True. You still get to that point where you get dividends. There's also something called drawings. Um, I'm, I'm a chartered accountant. There's something called drawings. Drawings, you know, where the owner of the business can pull out money from the business. But what I advise so that you, you maintain your discipline is that you kind of avoid drawings. It's not bad. But if you know that you're not very disciplined when it comes to financial things, can you stick to paying yourself a salary and allowances that are already documented? Always have, you know, do, do yourself a favor. You know, there's something called the board resolutions um for, for business board resolutions or if you want to because the truth is if you write your own employment letter as ceo who is addressing who <laughs> i'm not sure so <laughs> even if it's a resolution where you where the board says this is the amount of salary you will get at least at this stage of business and this is the allowances you're entitled to make sure that the salary you pay based on the stage of the business fairly it can cover some of the things you, you need and if you are the kind of person that you're a high spender and your business is not doing well, I want to tell you that you have to, there's something called delayed gratification. You have to bend low. Do you understand? But well, the time will come when you, as your business is getting more, your salary can increase. Even if, if you have it, your team will tell you, that ah, sir, no, you can't, but we need to do your salary. Pay yourself that salary, very important. Another thing, so I said, pay yourself the salary, separate your account, have a business account. If you have not registered your business, please have a separate, one of your personal accounts. They use specifically for the business. They're entrepreneurs. The day is coming. The tax man will come for you. The then LIRS you. will come for you. And when the LIRS <laughs> come for you, you don't want to be in that. Because when they come for you, every record you did not keep, every receipt you did not keep, every funny inflow and outflow you were making from the business account that was not justifiable as that only that salary you made, you are going to be hearing from them. And guess what? It's not a pretty experience. So just, just keep your records. I'm not, I'm not saying this only for the fear of the tax man, no. By the time you keep your records, you can defend yourself. Oh, this is it. This is all I take from the business. Do you understand? This is all I take. This is all I, because they will come for you. They will add some of them can get to where they tell you, we want to see your, 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 your personal bank account statement. And oh, they will pull out things for you. So you want to be, be that. Apart from that, you discipline yourself. You know what helps you with all this? When an investor wants to come for your business, just seeing the track record of discipline, Keeps that investor peace. Yeah. Because if people can say that, oh, this founder, I can trust this founder. This person is quite disciplined. Yeah. Another thing is, okay, I've said keep receipts. I've said prepare invoice, prepare contracts. Oh, contracts. No matter who you are doing business with, yeah. my dear brother and sister, even if it's your father, mm. have a written contract. Yeah. Have that engagement letter. You can call it a letter of engagement. That now, this also depends on the business you are doing. Now, if you are doing buying and selling, all you need is, you know, they pay, you print out a receipt for them, and you're done. But if it's a service type of thing or something that you have to actually give a contract, make sure there's a contract. And make sure that contract, if possible, if you can, if you have a lawyer friend or someone that can help you overlook those, you know, go through those contracts to ensure that you have terms that protect you. Because I see a lot of people giving out, um, maybe you give things from your business out on credit, the people owe you, they're your blood and all that. These things need to be stated in the letter. 
<laughs> and this is what I'm supposed to provide for you. This is where you're going to pay me. You get you. We expect your payment 30 days out from date of receipt of invoice or 10 days from receipt of invoice. You are very clear about that. You are very. You need to do those things. And even if the person comes to say, I want to borrow money, I want to pay, there has to be a contract where they say, this is the terms of payment, this is when you pay, have that. Because the day of recovery, if the person owes you, is coming. And when you, I see a lot of business people that have suffered, and they suffered out of, because of the goodness of their hearts. And you're running business, you don't need to suffer, so you need to protect yourself. Always have letter of engagement for your staff. When you employ somebody, always have a, an employment letter. Let your employment letter be very clear. What is the job of this person? When this person, if this person wants to resign, what should he do? Oh, 30 days in uh, of notice or a one month salary, really. whatever you have said, put it there. You have this, 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 put the job there. Put If you are in breach of this, this happened, put it there. Then also have something called like an employee form where you get all the information about your employee. Everything, no. Everything. Then you now have another form that you call guarantor's form. You need to have at least two. Tell your employer, your employee needs to get a guarantee of a family member and a non-family member. And you have to find a way to verify those people. Because I'm telling you that anything can happen. And if the employee, you work in a business where the employee handles money for you and anything happens, you, and they say, okay, how, what, what, what's the method of verification? How did you, you know, where's the employment letter? What's the contract? You need to have those things. So don't just employ someone by mouth and you're paying mm. them by mouth and all that. No. And even with paying, pay through, you know, the bank, you know, Pay through transfers, let it be clear. Treat your businesses with respect. It's very important. Now, accounting services. A lot of us here may not be accountants, you know, in the chat, but I'm a chartered accountant. So before I even started to hire an accounting person, I knew some things to do. But guess what? At some point in my business, even though I was a chartered accountant, I couldn't take it because my team was growing large. I had so many things to do. I was COO, CEO, everything I was doing. Before I started to bring in a team, I outsourced my monthly accounting. Outsource if you have to outsource. Outsource if you have, Professor Joy has said it, outsource if you have to outsource. There are good people that handle accounting services. There is Accounting Hub, there is Yeta, there are a lot of them. And you can get cheap um, whatever from them. That's if you know your business is at that point where you need to outsource it. Outsource. If you cannot, at least start with the basic Excel sheet keeping and keeping of records. That will help you. Then, Credit. So I think I've talked about clients. Have a way you onboard your clients. We've talked about business processes. Please have a client onboarding process. Very important. You don't want to lose um, clients. Most importantly, build your credibility. You know, I've run business for a few years now. And there are times where I needed funds to inject into the business. That's even beyond the word business, whatever. And I didn't have to go and go to any investor. It was from my circle. And this is because these are people that have seen that integrity. How, how, what's the level of integrity you've built in your network? You know, can people in your network, do they, and maybe I will ask, who are the people in your network? That's the first question. Who are the people in your network? Can your people in your network, can they support you? Can they, you know, help you, you know, with, with funding? I didn't say leave your, your, your bosom friends and go and be looking for people that are driving jeeps and all that. No, 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 no. But you need to begin to put value on yourself to be intentional about setting relationships. I'm very intentional about relationships. And the circle I have, when I was starting business, they were so supportive. They were so supportive. I'm telling, I'm telling people that maybe I'm just talking to one of them. Ah, this thing happened. They say, okay, if you need something, I can. And I'm like, okay. And then they're giving you things and they're not even asking for interest. Yeah. And so you are able to help yourself at that time, and then you're able to pay back. And because they know that this person, she's a lady of integrity. That is one. Apart from integrity, you need to be resourceful as a person. They know that for projects that I have, they have done in the past, I've been resourceful. I'm a very resourceful person. There's not there's nothing I cannot roll out here for you. I've been resourceful to them. I stand by them by their project. When it's time for my own, they'll stand, they'll stand for you. One of your biggest wealth as an entrepreneur is your circle. Yeah. It's just circle. And I feel like if you are in, on that, um, in this, um, in Professor Joy's community, you're very lucky because she has a powerful circle. So you just make sure you just align yourself in this community that this is where I want to be. I'm in a powerful community. A lot of people are at home, they're doing different things. They're not here. You're here having this for free because of her powerful community. Okay? So your credibility is very important. Build your credibility. Ask yourself, have, have I been a good person? Have I been credible enough? Can my friends trust me? Can people trust me? You know, with money, how can people, you know, um, 
can people give me their, their, their resources and be sure that I'm going to use it well? Ask yourself that question. And if the question, answer is no, then maybe you want to take some time to really work on yourself. The final thing I'll say is research, research, research. Entrepreneurs are very lazy. They're very lazy. There's a lot of things that they're very lazy because when I talk to some people, I'm like, this thing you are doing, that this is like easy peasy. Yeah. Like I told my team, I said, look, I'm not um I don't I don't know it all, but guess what? There are a lot of things I can do. Yeah. There are a lot of the social media management, there are a lot of things I can do. And I've seen myself do that. But you need to research. For example, I, I need to do, you know, this thing Prof, Prof Joy is talking about um, airtime and all that. So we, if, you, if you need to do, um, oh, we're going to um, send out airtime, we need to do, go and research their platform. She found people to outsource to research. Research, yeah. research, research, research. It is, it is very, but for everything, I tell you that for everything you are need, you need now. Oh, I don't know how to do my business process. I, I, I promise you, go on Google, spend like an hour. You watch Absolutely. you will come out with the first set of employment letters that I did for my team. I did it. I went to research. I'll yes. find things. I'll read different templates. I'll say, okay, this is the I started to give out employment letters. I will do HR things. I'll read how is HR something, something done. And I'll read, and guess what? People always ask me, how are you able to run the business alone? For how are you? How are you? I'm like, when I want to research, when I need something, I'm going to research and bring out that thing. And that's an attribute I have. I'm very resourceful. And it's not something that they had to blow on me like a powder. My sister and my brother, yeah. she will it. You have to work it. You will sit in front of your laptop. And most of us spend a lot of time on Instagram, Reels, we stay there, stay there. Use that time. Use that time and go and research. Ask yourself, what do you need in your business? Research. When you research, you know that when you research and you find some things, if you're not very clear about it, if you go to someone like uh, Professor Joy, I'm sure she can say, okay, at least you've even done the work for to bring some things forward. Let me help you from this point. Research, research, research. I have so many things to say, but trust me, I know that this show has to come to an end, but I am very, 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 you know, um, yeah, it's been, it's been exciting just sharing. It's just been awesome having you here. And um, trust me, we, we would like to have you back um would like would like to have you back and we would we would make our minds to ensure that you do come back <laughs> all right the network um thank god the network has been good it's really been so it's really been so awesome you know the conversation and this is what i wanted i wanted us to have you know this kind of conversation and that's why I saved Echika for this moment. You started from the beginning. I wanted us to have the fundamentals. Because before you get to this point of business process management and financial management, you need And we looked at um, how you can automate your business. And so today we're taking you into another level. And I'm sure you all got so much value from just listening to our conversation. It doesn't end here. We're going to have um, we're going to have a repeat of this um, sometime before the middle of the year. We're going to have a repeat of this, and I'm sure um, Echika will avail herself to us again. Don't take what you do here for granted. I always tell my people: you see, the internet is there's so much knowledge in it. I'm not an IT guru. Mm -hmm. But you know, most of the apps I use, most of the systems I use, I'm actually the one that research it, find it out, and tell my IT person, hey, these are the up and it was like one day he told me, he said, You have really stretched me that I've not worked with anyone like you, that you're always a step ahead, you're always a step ahead. And that's because I'm so passionate about my business, and that's what I want you to do. I want you to be so passionate about your business where you give yourself that commitment to sit down, research build your business my dream is to have an inspired tribe of women who are successful and living mm -hmm. a life of possibilities and that is the essence of almost all the platforms that i have and because you know one tree do not make a forest can you mm -hmm. imagine if we have a whole lot of us being so successful within our different endeavors it makes mm -hmm. life easy for everyone and mm -hmm. then we'll be happy we'll have time to smell the roses we'll have mm -hmm. time to go to or one skill set or the other. Like the mm -hmm. other day, I called Petrika. We had very good conversations. So this, these are some of the things I want to see in my tribe. 
But you need to give yourself the permission to play mm. full out. No one else can give you that permission. So you mm. need to say, you know what? I'm going to show up for myself. I'm mm. going to show up for myself. You know, there are some days I don't feel like doing anything at all. I just want to lie down in bed and, and just sleep. <laughs> but I remember that I have one, two, two, three things to do and the commitments I have. But then mm. I also give myself time out to play. Mm. Like some of you that on Facebook, I told you on Wednesday, I had an early day. I walked 3 to 2 p.m. I told myself, Joy, it's sufficient. It is on to today. And I took mm. off. But my businesses did not collapse. Mm. Now, even in time, finances for your business i want to touch on that you know mm -hmm. if you have multiple sources of income you can also give a loan to a particular business but i mm -hmm. need you to document like for instance i do a whole lot of things i do consultants i do coaching i run this mm -hmm. i do a lot of things so for some other income i give loans to another business and mm -hmm. it's documented mm -hmm. so that when the business gets to the point where it starts yielding profits i can start mm -hmm. drawing mm -hmm. down on the loan business exactly so please, documentation is very key you need you anything you do i will say my team members please keep a template hmm. so we have templates so you don't have to start the, the process all exactly. over again employment letters most of us here do not do not do that for those of you that hmm. worked with you know that even if i'm hiring you for a business or anything i give you employment contracts hmm. i like to keep it very clear i mm -hmm. like you to understand what your roles what and responsibilities are yeah. and then what my responsibility is to mm -hmm. you please even if it's your friend <laughs> document <laughs> document if she comes and say I, I assumed she would have known she's supposed to pay so and so mm -hmm. me i'm not having financial conversations mm -hmm. i'll say please let me know how much you, you expect me to pay now for so many of my tribe members that said a number of things you find out that most of them are willing to supply things to me without giving me delivery charges. Hmm. So, right ahead to pay you delivery charges because I know you're running a business. Hmm. I do know you're running a business. So, I'm very mindful of that. You know, so you need to be clear. Even when you want to give discounts, please document it and have a hmm. criteria and yeah. justification for that. Yeah. So, my, my friends will even tell you, I don't give discounts because you're my friend. Hmm. I will tell you, you to invest in yourself is well of investing in yourself so when people know that you're principled and it comes back to the core values of your business so um aside having a vision and a mission for your business mm -hmm. i need you to have to define what the core values of your business are there. because the core values is like your guiding guiding framework to say this mm -hmm. is what we do H. talked about um customer satisfaction efficiency integrity accountability mm -hmm. you know uh, so these are very key values value, yeah. so whatever value whatever business you're running mm -hmm. i need you to determine what is the value of this what is what is my core value for this business mm -hmm. and so for me most times you hear me talking about transformation transformative journey and that's because mm -hmm. it's key transformation empowerment are core values for me mm -hmm. And so for everything I do, if you look at the Friday night hangout, it is to have an empowered women tribe. And that's a core value for me. So you need to define some of these things and document it. Please document it. Document it and document it. So thank you so much. We've gone over time. Yeah. Uh, but it's excellent. And I see you all are still here. And that shows that we are having very interesting conversation. So mm. next week, um, Friday, make it a date with us. We're going to be wrapping up our conversation on business and um, finance. And then that's going to be the wrap-up conversation before we move into the next thing. But before we go, we need to do our usual. So I want to give out 10 copies of my Power Woman book to 10 people here. And I'll appeal to you if you've received, um, if you've had the Power Woman book before. If you're a winner, please, let's have other people. So if you're interested in having the Power Woman copy, I told you a friend of mine paid for 50 copies to be given to my tribe. And so um, this week we're going to give a... I want you to just write Power Woman and then you get it. So keep that comment in. The first 10 persons to write Power Woman the first 10 persons to write power woman and if you're in enugu please come to suit d9 
C2C Plaza Enugu, or you WhatsApp the number on the screen, 0703721272 for your soft copy. A number of persons for last week haven't um, haven't collected their free copy. So you could either get the soft copy or the hard copy. So please, um, I would encourage you to come in and collect your copy. So for those that want the Power Woman book, I want to see Power Woman. I've seen the first winner. Um, confidence, congratulations. You're the first winner. I've seen Nasiba, um, Informa, keep it coming in. And then if this is your first time on joining us on the Friday Night Hangout, I want to say a very big welcome. Welcome to our tribe. This is our safe space. And this is just uh, um, a tip of the iceberg, what we enjoy in this space. We have very frank conversations on topical issues while we build our skill set in our business and personal development. So I welcome you to the tribe and I hope to see you um, next week, Friday and beyond. And then please feel free to invite your friends, your family members, your colleagues to join us on the Friday night, every Friday at 7 p.m. We also have a lot of fun here. Now, I also want to advertise the Power Woman Forum. Oh my goodness. If you haven't subscribed to the online platform of the Power Woman Forum, my dear, you're really missing a lot. The Power Woman Forum is a kingdom-minded platform. And so when I say kingdom-minded platform, it's for women who have faith in God, who are willing to move beyond faith, to use faith as a foundation for growing their business. Remember, Chika said, Mwanga came to her from God. And that's the kind of thing. But she did not just sit down and say, okay, God gave me Mwanga. We are lights shine and be going. <laughs> but she had to do some work. And that's what the Power Woman Forum is all about. You get free resources. You get newsletters to keep you on the track. And then you also get mastermind classes. So we're going to have our next mastermind class coming up next week, next month, in the month of March, which is the Women's Month. We're going to talk about a lot. You've had all these conversations. We're going to be looking at how to create a strategic plan for your business and also how to conduct a SWOT analysis you've heard us talking about swat 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 we're going to we're going to teach you concretely we're going to do a hands-on how to conduct a swat analysis for yourself and for your business so some of the things you get from being a member of the power woman forum is that you get to attend our free mastermind classes free subscription of the power woman magazine individual health insurance free audiovisual resources newsletters and then we also have our annual Power Woman Networking Session, which happens once every year. Aside the virtual um, biannual forum would have as the Power Women, we also have the in-person or physical summit networking session that happens once a year. For those of you that attended that of last year, the launch, it was great. This year promises even to be greater. So simply go to joyonyeso.com and click on Power Woman Forum and get yourself registered. I look forward to welcoming you on the Power Woman Forum. I want to see my power women. It's time to invest in yourself and take this to another level. I have a package for the Power Woman Forum. I'm still working on it, but I'm super excited. Something cooking. And you'll be so excited to be a part of the Power Woman Forum once the package is unleashed. I'm just super excited about it. So I look forward to welcoming you and uh, on the Power Woman Forum. And please, if you're a member, you're registered, please log in. There are so much updates happening. Go check your newsletters. Go check the uh, media. A lot of things are already up there. And I want you to please check and get yourself updated. Now, in the month of um, March, I'm going to have a book reading session on the Power Woman book. My Power Woman book. I'm going to have a reading session. Um, I'm going to have four reading sessions for the Power Woman book. It's free, but you need to register. So um, by next week, I'm going to give you the details of how to register for the Power Woman reading session. And I can only take 25 women or men. So it's going to be open for women and men. Uh, my book reading session is just going to be 25 persons. We're really going to dig deep and it's free, completely free. But I want you to register for that session. So get ready. Next week, we're going to unveil the link and we're going to take the first 25 persons to come on board. Have you really gotten value for tonight? I have. 
and I hope you have too. Before I hand over to Etika for her wrap up um, comments, I want to take our data giveaway. So the first, I'm in a very exciting mood tonight because there's been so much conversations. I see so much engagement energy. So the first 20 persons to put in the chat box business process is a long one and I do that and I'm mm -hmm. doing that purpose <laughs> so that I, some people are already putting their numbers and so this is going to distract them. So put in business process and then your number. Business process and your number because I want you to remember that you need to have a business process. Mm -hmm. Business right. process. Yeah. <laughs> business um, process and your number. So the first 20 persons to put in yeah. business process and your number i have the first winner success congratulations keep it coming in i have ifacho congratulations a member of my team is going to be picking it up and we're going to give you 500 naira free data subscription it's just my little way of saying thank you so much so etika mm -hmm. you wrap up two minutes to wrap up and then okay. we'll... <laughs> i don't even know where to start for because my head is <laughs> But you know, we, we, we have we have to wrap it up. Um so to be honest, it's an honor to be here. I, I don't take it for granted. I don't take any time for granted because anytime I have the opportunity to shed light, it's an honor. I don't take it for granted. What I would say to us, you know, in closing is one thing I wanted to stress is despite all we have said, one thing that is important for you entrepreneurs to do is find time to rest. Yes. Find time to rest. People don't tell you enough, but find time to rest. Sometimes you keep going in the business, you keep going in business, but always remember that if something happens to you, if your business is in an early stage, you know, a lot of things can go wrong. Find time to rest, very important. Treat your business with respect. You know, I said it the, um, the last time, treat your business with respect. Treat it, treat, I want every one of us to go back and ask ourselves that question. Am I passionate about my business? If you're not, there has to be something else you're passionate about that you can start. You need to love your business because your business needs to outlive you. Yes. Don't always say you want to run a business that will just end. Think about your gen. Think about the generations you know to come. Think about something that you want to have a lasting legacy. Professor Joy kept saying, "Legacy, legacy is very important." Not every one of us will have a legacy, to be honest. But you want to give your best, you know, to try. So you have to think about your business differently. It takes you to. Um, it, it once you think about, so, you know, we're asking you to take your business to a higher level, but the entrepreneur, it starts with your mind. Your mindset needs to change about how you look at your business. Your mindset needs to change about how you view yourself. You know, it took me a long time to actually accept that I was fully into entrepreneurship. People that knew me growing up just felt like, you know, they said, ah, she's, the, she's the one that would be like president of the World Bank, you know, so, you know, I had like, I was, I had a fast career growing but things turned around and I had to go into entrepreneurship and the truth is I'm seeing the way God is using me on this journey something I wouldn't have emphasized at this time but I'm saying that because of that passion because of that mindset change I'm able to embrace it and I'm able to take it differently do that for your business do that for yourself you owe it to yourself to do it financial management you work so hard in this business, whether you have processes, structures or not, you owe it to yourself to step back and see how this business is really doing. Is it worth it? Is it not worth it? Am I doing the best? Am I not doing the best? If you handle, you know, there are a lot of things about financial management I couldn't say because, you know, we focused a lot on the business process angle. But there's so many things for you to be able to step back and see how your business is doing financially. Some of you think you need money, whereas you don't need money. What you need is to stretch your business. Yeah. And you would have a return that you, you have never, you know, even emphasized. I'm a testament of that. So yeah. remember, rest. Take your business seriously. Ask yourself if you're passionate about the business. And there's nothing to be ashamed of. You're in, you're in a great community. I'm sure if you come to Professor Joy and say, Professor Joy, okay, so this business, I'm saying, at, at the end of the day, you know, I'm not sure I really wanted to do it in the first place. I'm too sure she will guide you around your passion and then you'll be able um, to start something sometimes passion doesn't even come on you from the beginning guess what you can start a business you're not passionate about but you grow in love with the business over time it can happen to you so don't despise where you are the entrepreneur and i want to say if nobody has told you i'll tell you you're doing a fantastic job you're doing amazing it's not easy to run a business you're doing it and i salute i doff my heart for every one of you that is running a business 
in here. And thank you, Prof. Joy, for having me tonight. It's been amazing. I love the energy of your community. And yeah, definitely, yes, we should do this again. I'm all here yeah. for it. Um, you can reach me on LinkedIn, um, Ichika Obijaku. Uh, I don't know how I should log in here, but yeah. Just go to LinkedIn. Once you type my name and my son name, I'm probably the only Ichika Obijaku you ever see. So, and you see this smile, so you know that. You know I'm going. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you yeah, so much. Please. Oh, thank you so much, Ichika. And thank you to all of you for staying with us. I see the energy is still high. Everyone is still here. No one has gone. So I want to say thank you so much. And I would always say this. I love you. I honor you. And I celebrate you. Yes. Because it's not easy to be where you are today. It yes. takes a lot of time, a lot of commitment for you to show up every yes. Friday at 7 p.m. Mm. And the tribe is growing. The tribe is really growing. I see more and more people coming on board. So if this is your first time, this is me saying... Welcome here. This is our safe space. I love you so much. And keep, make it a date with us. Invite more people in. This is how we roll here. We have fun. We have conversations. We have yeah. giveaways. And we also get insights as well. Um, no judgment here. Um, mm. Here we're, we, we, we are here and we just love ourselves as women. And mm. um, I just celebrate all of you. I love you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chica. I want to Thank use this time you. out to also say... Um, a very big thank you and shout out to my team. Adeze Onyeso, thank you for so much for the background support and music. Sarah Ubu, thank you for setting up the studio and all the adverts. Favor Kechuku, thank you so much for giving me studio support and broadcast. Sussex Marcos, thank you so much for providing Friday Night Hangout with logistics support. You all are amazing. These are my team members and they are just amazing. So I celebrate them. I, I love you all. Thank you so much. And don't forget the Friday night hangout song, you know, that's where we also get our inspiration from because the Friday night hangout song is one that if you listen to it, it's very um, inspirational at the beginning of the day, uh, it just sets you up. And you know what, maybe we're not going to have the Friday night hangout to log out because my DJ has fallen asleep. <laughs> But that's good. We had it at the beginning and I just love you so much and I look forward to having you next week, Friday. Make it a date with us. Love you all. Keep being you. Oh, hey. Keep celebrating. It's a Friday night. It's Friday night. So no one can do you like you Oh, you're muted. You're muted. Ah, okay. Sorry, I'm <laughs> muted. Love you all so much. Um, can we have the Friday night hangout song? If we can do that, um, that would be nice. I love you so much. Thank you so, so much. Let's make it a date next week, Friday. And Echika, hmm, thank you. Tonight was a oh, yeah, yeah. It's a Friday night.